expendable soldiers. I mean, I've studied U.S. military history a bit as a novice. I don't think I've ever thought of any period in any army. Even the Roman centurions, they let them go after 10 years. Uh, I just can't believe that they're keeping people in this long and doing automatic re-ups. And a lot of people don't have jobs to go back to or they're so traumatized, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that a lot of them don't know anything but the military. They're almost institutionalized like prisoners. Well, uh, they do hold them on basis, and that is a suspicious aspect of what happened at Fort Hood. Um, that guy probably should not have been kept in the military, but then they run into the problem of how do we discharge them. Um, and so they don't make the decision, and I'm afraid this guy just got shipped down the road from El Paso up the road to uh, Killeen, Texas. Well, that was one of your points is, is, is ask the question, is Fort Hood a dump site for problem soldiers, and why was uh, Lopez sent there? Well, that is, a, that is a, you know, like a key question. I mean, that's like, you know, looking for a Malaysian airline or 370. Um, you know, don't look in the Arctic Ocean. Um, look in the Indian Ocean. Um, and um, let's, let's find out what was going on in that... Uh, Fort Bliss. Uh, this guy wasn't in Fort Hood very long, and and I don't think they knew him very well. Um, but they know him at 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 Fort Bliss in El Paso. Um, and if he was under under this assessment for post traumatic stress disorder and and a traumatic brain injury, why would they send him at this time? Did they? Did they? He's a truck driver. Uh, did they? He a truck driver at Fort Hood, so I don't know. But the the reason for that transfer, um, you know, should be um, explained, just like it should have been explained. What was the reason for the transfer of, of Major Hassan uh, to Fort Hood? I, I I fear that they didn't know know very much about him when he got there. Well, reportedly, the CIA didn't give the Pentagon the reports Congress reported uh, a few years ago that for two years they were tracking Hassan, talking to al-Qaeda about things he was planning. Uh, and it just looks like a whole process of passing the buck is going on uh, with just all sorts of uh, people that are disturbed. Uh, unfortunately, the, the system uh, is overwhelmed. Um, and oftentimes, in my experience, um, they just really don't know what to do with some of these problem people. And um, this was one of those problem people. He didn't just <laughs> he didn't just get refused to leave and get you know PO'd at 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 some low level human relations clerk. Well, sure. I mean, look at how he was begging for help. Uh, they're now having to admit all over the place and wasn't even really getting it. Well, uh, it's worse than that. They're not even they're not even acknowledging that he was in combat. And here's a Facebook. Um, posting um, two years ago, celebrating life. It has been exactly one in, year and two days since I left Iraq, seeing in Fallujah the most brutal explosion. I was left paralyzed and started a discussion over the radio. I was only focused on breathing deeply so that I don't lose focus and continue the, the mission. We're hours of agony waiting for an attack by the insurgency, but we were able to exit Fallujah all alive. I was in vehicle number six. The worst was that number number five was a diesel truck, the perfect target, and I was only thinking about getting back with my family. You know, <laughs> you know, this is a posting two years ago. Now, was he lying? It sounds pretty detailed to me, but at the bottom it says, you know, general commander of the post said Lopez did not experience direct combat in Iraq. That sounds to me like direct combat. Well, they always want to act like anybody that goes off the deep end, you know, was never a, a, a combat soldier because, you know, those guys are all angels. Uh, look at Sergeant Bales killing the 18 people. Remember that? I sure do. That's in my book. And um, he was not fit for duty. Uh, he had a half a foot. Um, well, let's talk about him when we come back. Amazing book. I want to get into the book. I haven't read it yet, Wounded Minds. And we got a guy who's been in the VA the whole nine yards. 
top uh, MD psychiatrist who's worked with these people forever and, of course, been in combat himself and uh, is breaking it down for us. We'll be right back. Friends, this is Alex Jones for MidasResources.com. For more than 15 years, I have exclusively used Midas Resources for all my precious metal needs. Whether it's bullion or collectibles you're looking for, Midas Resources is simply the best. I own my gold as a hedge against inflation. This Federal Reserve fiat currency could go the way of the Deutschmark and the Weimar Republic anytime. In these historically dangerous times, it makes sense to physically hold gold and silver. Midas already has some of the best deals in the industry. But if you give them a call and mention the radio special, they will give you a list of the day's super specials. Midas brokers are standing by to answer all your questions at 800-686-2237. They also have a lot of informative free literature explaining the opportunities and risk of holding precious metals. They are ready to answer your questions at 800-686-2237. Again, that's 800-686-2237. In the last 50 years, iodine has been phased out of our staple foods and replaced with the halogen bromine, a practice now banned in nations around the world. Guess what else is in the halogen family? Fluoride. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Jones here. In 1924, the federal government did the right thing and encouraged salt producers to add iodine. It's the good halogen on the periodic table. And the results are on record. Reports documented a 15-point IQ increase in areas that had previously been deficient in iodine. Bottom line, iodine is important. Unbound, clean, in a glycerin base, nascent iodine was the answer for myself and my family. You will find Survival Shield nascent iodine exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com. InfoWars Life Survival Shield nascent iodine isn't just for emergencies. I take it every day. That's InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. Clean water at home, clean water at the office, clean water on the go. The Berkey Guy has a Berkey water filtration model for anywhere you are and one that fits any budget. Thousands of satisfied customers can't be wrong. For free shipping within the U.S., go to GoBerkey.com or call 877-886-3653. That's 877-886-3653. Helping thousands prepare since 2005, GoBerkey.com. Attention gun owners, it's reasonable to assume that at some point you may need to defend your family from an armed attack. But is it reasonable to mount a defense without a strong offense? Infidel Body Armor goes on in seconds, is civilian legal in all 50 states, is 100% made in the USA, is veteran owned, and ships next business day for free. Go to InfidelBodyArmor.com. I-N-F-I-D-E-L BodyArmor.com. Infidel Body Armor just won't quit. Hi folks, Alex Jones here with some important information. I want to tell you about Matt Redhawk and his team of patriots over at My Patriot Supply. Several years ago, Matt was sitting in his two-bedroom apartment, frustrated with the direction this country was headed, and the charlatans willing to sell us out for a quick buck. Deciding to take action, a company run by Patriots for Patriots was born. My Patriot Supply has never taken a loan or accepted outside funding. They now operate two distribution facilities and employ over 50 hardworking American men and women. It is rare to find companies who practice what they preach. And that's why I stock my pantry with high-quality storable foods from My Patriot Supply. Go to MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex today for special offers on emergency food storage or call their preparedness specialist at 866-229-0927. That's 866-229-0927. Do business with someone who shares your values. MyPatriotSupply.com slash Alex. John Liebert is our guest, a veteran working in the VA and the psychiatry department heading it up in major hospitals. And we were getting into the fact that all-time record suicides, dwarfing any period ever, outpacing combat deaths. They had all these flags at half mass around the country for three dead, four dead, including the shooter, which I guess is fine. But what about the seven vets that are in the military that die every day of the 22 that are veterans? 
22 a day total. Seven of them was the average CNN had, if that's accurate, th that are active duty. Where's the ha half mass for them? I mean, it, it, the half mass would be every day. So we were getting into Sergeant Bales. For those that don't know about that, sir, tell people about that. Well, Sergeant Bales um, <clears throat> was, had already served three tours. Um, there were really no alleged problems other than the fact that, that uh, he had a, you know, his foot amputated. Uh, he was left with a half a foot, which would have rendered him on the fitness for duty profile um, uh, unqualified for deployment. Uh, he was not fit for duty just because of his foot. He also had a, a head injury um, in, uh, in, a, in Iraq. Um, he was in some of the fiercest combat in Iraq. And he also had a head injury, um, you know, on base on an automobile accident. Um, he apparently uh, had a diagnosis of post-traumatic stress disorder, but that that's not clear. Um, uh, and you know, I he was he was deployed against his wishes, and he probably had more common sense than anybody who deployed him because he really. I don't think he was fit for duty. I'd like to see his fitness for duty profile. I mean, it's on his record. Uh, well, it's ridiculous. He had he had a fake foot, and that uh, the day before he went and, and, and flipped out, he said, didn't remember who he was on all the drugs, his buddy almost got killed and some other friends got killed in an IED attack. Yeah. He saw that happen. If, I'm going from memory here. You've got the files there obviously in front of you. Uh, and then they just keep deploying, keep making him go out. And he says, look, I don't want to go back out, uh, please. And they, they, they made him, and then they put him on a bunch of medication. How does the medication feed into this? Well, I, I, don't, I don't think he was on psychotropic medication, but there is a controversy about his being on an anti-malarial drug, which has uh, yeah. disinhibited people and caused violence in soldiers. Um, I don't think that's ever been established. Um, I don't believe he was on psychotropic medications. Uh, he was apparently drinking. Uh, but the point is that you know they they not only sent him, they not only deployed him, but they deployed him to what appeared to be a remote and rather dangerous um, uh, special forces outpost uh, to protect the special forces. Uh, so. It sounds to me like uh, he was sent on an, on kind of a suicide mission. Um, and uh, yes, uh, you know, he probably uh, had uh, lost enough of his buddies. And uh, these IEDs are, are just absolutely so dangerous and so devastating. Uh, he probably just uh, yeah, had one too many of those and buried one too many of his friends and... Uh, um, he went off, and tell you the truth, I don't think he ever planned to come back to the United States. I think he was probably suicidal, my speculation, uh, the way he was behaving. And when they say he doesn't remember, um, I tend to believe him, although I did not examine him. But instead, we put him in prison. And I'm not saying what he did was good, it was horrible, but... How do you put a man through this stuff and not expect a large percentage of them to blow? Uh, well, it, it, that, that, of course, is the, the important question, and I don't think that uh, it's being addressed at the levels uh, where it should be addressed. Um, I, don't, I don't believe uh, that, uh, you know, just running this volunteer army over and over and over again in order to solve the problems of the Vietnam draft is a solution. I think the Vietnam draft is a failure. I think this all-volunteer army is a failure. Uh, it's not the soldiers. It's not the units. You know, the Vietnam army was one of the best ever fielded, and they just got thrown into the garbage can. Um, this army uh, is an excellent army. Um, it's also going to probably be trashed, too, as they downsize. I, and, and I don't think the policy is. I don't think the policy is right. I think we should. The draft didn't work. The volunteer army didn't work. I think we need to go to universal military service. Everybody graduates from high school, uh, goes into the military. Doctor Liebert, stay right there. I want to come back and, and hear more of your solutions and uh, you know uh, debate back and forth the pros and cons of universal service or a new draft. Of course, you know all the congressional kids are going to be exempt.
We're